All right, so these are the pots that I trimmed last. Well, actually, these are the pots that I trimmed last. Um, all of these were thrown out of one and a half pounds. And you can see there's like a big difference in their size. And if you pick them up, there's a big difference in their weight too. I kind of feel, I haven't actually weighed, weighed each one. And it's so funny because without weighing them, you can pick one up and be like, oh, this is the heaviest. But I bet if I actually like weighed, weighed them, I find it different. And it's, I think it's just the mind saying, oh, this is an object this size and it should weigh this much. And then you pick it up and whether or not I shouldn't, I shouldn't toss pots like that. Anyways, I'm in a really good mood, so I'm going to be careless a lot. The goal for these, <clears throat> and anyway, so these pots I've thrown one and a half. Um, in the videos, I'm titling them, I'm calling them Raku Pots, Raku Pot, and then the number, uh, because Sean signed me up for a rack group iron class <clears throat> or it's like a session with a woman so it's kind of like not formal um we don't even really have a date for it other than sometime in a few weeks I will drop off eight to ten of my best pieces for her to bisque fire and then a couple weeks later I will come out to her place and um participate in actual raku firing and she said bring it in my best eight to ten pots well the ones that I've thrown so far a majority of them are, are carved which I don't think is good for raku um, from what I've been reading the most important thing is to make sure that your walls are even and you don't have different thicknesses now what I'm worried about is of course my, my thick bottoms So, anywho, I had trimmed these five pieces. I had six, six, yes, I had six, but I trimmed through the bottom of the first, and then the rest of the four, I feel like I was probably overly cautious. And this particular one, this one, I threw out of three pounds, and it's very heavy on the bottom, and I can feel the thickness of difference on the bottom. Now it's not everywhere. I'm gonna to try to trim a little bit more off of this one, but it may be too dry now. I don't know. Um, I left it stored with my clay in the bucket, but we'll see. But what I need to do is take a little bit off the edges here and then probably just a little more around the outside rim. I think the middle is almost okay. We'll see. Hopefully I won't trim through the bottom. I wasn't doing when I was trimming I was not tapping the bottom and I don't know what I'm tapping for but I won't know what I'm tapping for until I keep tapping and then eventually I'll learn what I'm tapping for I know it's a sound but I don't know what the sound is
collection of all of these a little bit more now, maybe. The other ones may not be in as good state as this one though, because I did store this one differently.
thing is the bottom, the very middle seems thinner than the outside. Oh, that's cool. There's like this chattering on it. That's neat. It's neat. I know that word. Chattering.
way. Mm. See, like right there? It kind of feels right, man. It sounds right, but like, it still feels heavy to me, but maybe it's just because the walls seem thick to me. Everything seems heavy to me, but what do I know? Seriously, I don't know anything. Keep it. I mean, not to keep it forever. The goal is to get eight to ten pots, and then I can keep making and then cut them small. So this is what it looks like. I mean, if anything, I mean, that foot looks about the same thickness as the wall. Hmm. So, anywho. And the reason why I'm in such a good mood is because I just got my mom moved home back into her house um, after being away uh, in the hospital for about three months. She uh, broke her leg and then did physical therapy and I do rehab. And it was really rough because I just lost my stepdad in, uh, in February. So it was really scary. She fell in March. And it was really scary to have my mom, you know, in a scary situation right after, after my stepdad who raised me, he was my dad. So, but she's better now and it's good. Things are good. So my stepdad's still with me. He was, uh, I started pottery about the time that, um, yeah. When I started recording myself, I was doing it both as, you know, a way to track my progress, but also as therapy to help me through a hard time. And I intended to talk about um, what was going on, but I never really bring myself to do it. And then I, uh, after Neil passed, I started putting my videos public. Um, you know, my stepdad. Because, you know, when you lose somebody you love, you start looking at things differently and you start, you know, I've lost my grandparents. I've lost my grandmother who I was close to um, in 2021. But Neil was like the closest person I'd ever lost and I was not prepared. Anyways, those things make change the way you look at things and it starts making you look at your loved ones and realizing that they're not gonna be there forever. And even though you've always known that, feeling that hole, that like big gaping hole that a loved one leaves, that a loved one leaves, makes you think differently and one of the things I wish we had more of Neil was photos and videos. And it's funny because the photos and videos I have in my brain of Neil are 
just, you know, it's not like actual moments that we spent together, but it's him in the kitchen singing at the sink. You know, or when he's doing woodwork or playing with his dogs, you know, they're like these candid moments of just him and his life and just being there. Anyways, in the event that I go before my loved ones, I want them to have something of me. I want them to be able to go back and look at something. You know, and my sister's seen a few of these videos and she knows me well enough that she can tell when I'm happy and I'm proud and she sees, I remember showing her one, she's like, look how proud you are, Casey, you're so happy. You know, and the moments when my love comes in and talks to me and you know, I can see my face just light up when I see him. I want him to have those moments in case I go before he does. Which probably won't happen because the women in my family don't do that. We tend to outlive our men. But um, that's why I'm doing this. And I got um, a little weirded out when like followers pop up and people comment because I didn't think anybody would because I'm intentionally making these not YouTube, YouTube videos, like no thumbnails or it's not court, you know, it's not planned. This is not, as I tell people, this is not educational or entertainment. Um, I guess it's not educational or entertaining. But, uh, anyways, I got a little self-conscious and I just, I'm gonna let that go because there's like five people that are actually looking at these and I, they're just looking at, I think they're just looking at the general overall thing. And I'm very grateful to those people too, by the way. Um, Kate Manuel is one. And then um, there's several, there's a couple of people that have been really kind and gave me suggestions and tips or, you know, videos, other videos to check out. Even a couple of people made videos of their own to help point out things. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. So I don't want to seem like, oh, I don't want people looking or talking to me. Like, I didn't realize that, I guess I'm old, but I didn't realize that you could form a community, like meet people and talk to people over YouTube. I thought it was all just like, this is what I do, I'm presenting, and I thought it was for those people. So, anywho, I don't really know what I'm saying. I just, uh, I just wanted to say that. Oh, and then if you look at some of my older videos, like in the beginning, anything from the beginning through March, you know, you'll see, I, there are just moments where I just kind of stare off and just kind of, I was going through a lot and uh, I don't know, you know, going back to the whole life and death and everything and learning how grief is a process and trauma is a process that you go through, like how my brain works, my memory is not great long term, term, you know, and I forget things and then, you know, it's like you're driving and you're just magically there. Life is like that sometimes, you know? You're like, oh, I'll remember this drive. It's so memorable. But by the time you get there, you don't. Well, that's how like everything is for me. And I don't want to forget. Not, not that I don't want to forget about Bob. What we went through with Neil was really hard. It was hard for him and it was hard for us. But at the same time, it brought my family very close together. And we got really strong. And Neil moved in with us when I was 11 and I'm 40 now. So he's been in my life for a very long time. I don't think he ever really, really knew how much we loved him. 
until the end. There's like an intimacy of taking care of someone when they are in pain and they are weak, physically weak, not, not emotionally or he felt weak and he put himself down sometimes and I, I never wanted, I told him all the time that he was strong because he went through so much, but being with someone you love or just being with someone through that, it's like really hard, but at the same time, it's an honor and it's a privilege and I was grateful to be there with him. I would have taken him in any state, no matter how much help he needed or wanted or didn't want. <sighs> Anyways. <clears throat> I don't... I don't want to forget the bad times because within those bad times are those moments. Oh fuck. Anyways, I loved him. I love him very much and he is with me. I go see him in the hospital and he'd always ask me how my plate was doing and I would tell him and he's like, I want you to, I'm so glad that you're sticking with that. Man, he was a good man. He was a really, really, really good man. All right, I'm not gonna cry. Uh, so these are my pots. They're probably some of them are too thick. Bring those happy thoughts back. He'd be really happy to see my mom at home right now. I know he looked out for her when she was sick and she hurt herself. We thought we were gonna lose her for a minute. And then back pottery is a way for me to connect with both of them because my mom has always encouraged art and creativeness and any crit like I don't know. My mom's so cool. My mom is an artist at heart, and I mean, she's an artist in real life too, like never like, she doesn't sell her stuff because she doesn't believe she's good, but um, she just picks things up and she's just good. She always sees the flaws, but she does polymer clay and uh, she makes just cool things. She can also draw really well. She does entangle, that's why I do this entangle. And Neil did woodworking. And he's very precise and good at that too. So this is a way for me to connect with both of them. Man, life fucking sucks sometimes, but it's really good too. It's like, it's like a shit sandwich sometimes. <laughs> it's like a shit sandwich. Like a ice cream cookie shit sandwich, like something really delicious and something really awful. <sighs> so anyways, that's me sharing personal stuff. Maybe my mom or my sister or my love will see it one day. I know Neil already sees it. <sighs> I miss him so so, so much. Okay, so, um, plan is, I'm gonna set these aside. I'm gonna look at my clay and see what I have and throw some more pieces, I think. Um, these were all a pound and a half and at first I was thinking a pound and a half wasn't big enough, but it's funny, you see this is a pound and a half and this is three and they're very similar in size. And that's how thick these walls are. So, this is like a damn concrete pot. 
I probably won't keep this one in the end, but I need, I need eight to 10 pots. So whatever comes out. So I will move these out of my way. I will blow my nose and stop crying. And, and then I will move over to wedging and getting some clay together.